Greetings, YouTubians, and welcome back to Wayne Sharp World, where today we have an epic heavyweight matchup in Battle of the Blades featuring none other than the Hoag Sig K320 Nitron versus the one and only, the infamous Spyderco Shaman. Now, before I go any further into this head-to-head -head matchup, I want to thank you guys for tuning in today. If you like what you see, do me a huge favor, smash that subscribe button, follow along, and I will continue to bring you the content. Now... As when it comes to comparing these two knives, I have one production model here of the K320, but now I also have two models here of the Spyderco Shaman, and I'm going to use both of them. I will explain why real quick. Let me put this knife here right next to the Prajali line. In case you guys are wondering, this line here, this, this is not a hair. This is actually the Prajali line. So there you go. Now you know. The more you know. Okay, so I'm going to use this shaman here when i reference the blade because this is the production blade i kind of frankenstein this one together with some incredible scales from sharp dress knives i'll, I'll touch on these briefly just because a uh, sharp dress knives needs their 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 due but i'll do that when i get to handle um as far as the blade though this is the blade i'll be using to compare because this is the production blade this knife here is a sprint run with really the same blade, it's just a satin finish instead of a stone wash, and it's crew wear. So as far as cutting edge and thickness and all that, it's the exact same, um, but this is not what you can get on a regular basis, as well as the micarta scales. But these scales also are the exact same as the G10 scales that come on the production model. So got to kind of use both of these to get the best scoring, best truthful scoring for the regular production shaman. So with that being said, let's start. Let me get the K320 in here, set that next to the Prajali line, and let's go. Let's start with the blade. Now I'm going to say though, this is such, these knives are so similar. Scoring was really tough. I had to really nitpick. When you're looking at the blade of the Shaman, oh, wait, I just told you guys what I was going to do and I completely ruined that. Okay, when I talk about the blade of the Shaman, we're looking at 3.6 inches in length, 3.25 cutting edge, S3V steel, a blade stock thickness coming in at 0.144 inches, and 26 thousandths behind the edge. You also have a slightly higher grind with this blade comparing it to the K320. Um, yeah, just... Just a marginal difference there. If you look, there you go. You can see the grind line a little better there. So the grind does come up farther on the Shaman. And um, you also have a more aggressive tip. You got more belly on the K320, but you got more of an aggressive tip there with the Shaman. So overall, this is a very, very strong blade. Um, strong as in performance, durability, uh, aesthetics. It, it, the blade just really works for this guy. I can't think of anything to really pick it apart on. Um, I don't have an issue with S30V steel. You know, I know there's M390, 20CV, and all those super steels out there, but S30V is still a damn good steel. I'm not taking anything away for it having S30V, especially since its competitor does. I have to base the scoring based on its competition, not necessarily the entire industry. So I'm going to go five. I'm going to go full five. It has a fantastic steel. It has a, you know, it doesn't have a razor thin edge, but that full flat grind, it, this guy is, it is a slicer. The Shaman is a slicer in my opinion, and a very great blade at that. Now looking at the K320, we're looking at 3.5 inches in length, a 3.2 inch cutting edge, S30V steel as well, but a slightly thinner blade stock coming in at 0.126 inches. Now the edge on this guy is 27 thousandths. So just that one thousandths, you're not gonna notice that. And I didn't notice that when I was doing my cutting test with these two. You also have a nice swedge up here. So the combination of that thinner stock and the swedge kind of helps make up for that little bit of difference in the height of the, the grind, of the flat grind. So, you know, in all honesty, I love both of these blades. I love this just as much as the Shaman. I really don't have any reason not to give this blade a five as well, because it is just an excellent blade. Um, the belly here, depending on how you use your knives... It, sometimes this belly can be a little more handy than the slightly less belly with the shaman but i really can't say that because that's i mean that's really 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 getting nitpicky so i just i'm not gonna go there these blades are both fives in my opinion now going into the handle and ergos this took some real close comparing too let me get rid of this right here and bring in the other shaman 
So this is where I had to do a lot of measuring because there was something about the K320 that just filled my hand a little more. So as I got around to measuring this, um, the choil area on these guys both measure 1.18 inches from side to side. And I'm using right where the blade meets the handle on both of these, 1.8 inches and 1.8 inches. Um, the finger, or the, blah, excuse me. Um, the handle thickness is also 0.53 inches. So you have the exact same thickness in stock, as well as the exact same difference in measurement from in the choil area. So that's a huge comparison right there to, where, to show you just how similar these knives are. The difference is the bottom half of the handle. As you can see down here, the handle, the handle on the Shaman gets a little slimmer. I wouldn't necessarily call it real slender, but it does slim down a little compared to the K320, which stays a little more of the same. We have a measurement from right here to right here on the Shaman of 1.15 inches, but on the K320, from this point right here to right over behind the screw, we're looking at 1.23 inches. Now, I know that doesn't sound like a big difference, and I didn't think it was, but it is, especially considering that it maintains that thickness all the way down as to where the Shaman gets a little more slender. The handle of the K320 just, it, it works better for my hand. It fills that bottom portion of especially my ring and pinky finger. And I, I obviously notice a little more on my middle finger as well since it's going right over that area there. That really is what makes the difference. And there's also one other really defining factor when it comes into the ergos of these knives, and that's the clip. And in all honesty, the clip is really, it is kind of just as big of a factor as the width difference here. But on the K320, you have a deep carry pretty slender clip. The ramp comes up enough to go over your pocket hem, but it also doesn't poke your hand. And because of the width staying wider towards the bottom and the fact that it's just a, a lower profile clip from, from top to bottom, it just feels better in your hand. You really don't feel it that much at all, to be honest. Um, it almost disappears when you have this knife in hand. So very, very nice feel of the clip. And when you get to the Shaman, you have that regular Spyderco clip that is considerably longer, as you can see. And it also just, it has more of a ramp that is not necessarily a hot spot. This clip is not a hot spot, but you feel it a lot more in hand. I mean, you fully feel the top of this clip pushing against your palm. Again, not making a hot spot, but you feel it, you know it's there. As to where when you're holding this knife in hand, this K320, that clip kind of just goes away. Um, and that's very, very impressive. So when it comes to the Ergos, I'm going to give a five for the K320. And I'm going to be a little generous because the Shaman still does have some hand, hand hugging Ergos. I'm going to go 4.5. So 4.5 for the Shaman and five for the K320. Now value. Yeah, value is could very well be the decision maker in this battle. And you guys know how I feel about the Shaman. Now, for a second here, stop and picture S30V Steel and G10. This Forget the micarta, G10. The stock version comes with S30V Steel, G10 handle for $210. Now, that is a lot. But as much as I slam the Shaman for being over $200, especially comparing it to all the other Spyderco models that are well under $200, this is still made in the USA, which is a huge factor. So when you think of a USA made knife being as good as the Shaman for $210, it's still not bad, but when you have so many other models to compare it to, and I know there's so much contouring that goes into the handles of the Shaman, I get that. I know there's more labor from what they say, um, but it's still too much. It's still too much to ask for this knife. Um, not by a whole lot, but I think 180 I think 180, 190. This this knife is 20 or 30 dollars overpriced in my opinion. Um, but still, being made in the USA, I'm gonna be generous here. I'm gonna give it a three, um, only because it's made in the USA. If this was made in China, it would be a two at best. Um, but since it is USA made in Golden, Colorado, I'm gonna go three for the value of this Shaman. Now, getting into the K320 you have S30V steel, glass fiber reinforced polymer 
which is basically the same stuff they put on other Sig Sauer products. Um, and you get this really very similar strength. I think it is grossly underrated, underestimated how strong these handles are. They just feel different. You're not losing strength, you're losing the feel of G10. And that really bothers some people, myself included. I am absolutely one of those people. But you just don't quite have that cheap hollowy feel with this handle. It feels good. And this knife is also made in the USA. USA made for $127.46. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a five all day long. All day long for this guy right here. So this, this destroys the shaman in value um, without a doubt. Now, moving into carry. Again, we're getting into the carry, and it, it, they're really the same width. When you have these closed and in your pocket, there is really no difference at all in the width. They're virtually the same. It all comes down to this clip. It all comes down to the clip, and you have... A knife here. Here's how they look carrying in your pocket. That's how much more the Shaman sticks out than the K320. Now, some people will like that because you do have a good amount here to pull the knife out of your pocket with the Shaman. That is nice. But then on the K320, they have these little, uh, like, I, I guess I almost call them gills or just little areas on the clip of this to where when you grab it, you got to put your thumb in your pocket. But when you grab it, you have really good grip on your finger that doesn't it's not abrasive it doesn't hurt your finger to help you pull out of your pocket that's a very very clever idea and it works well um so considering just these clips and how well they carry they feel the same in pocket as far as how much it takes up they're both wider knives so they kind of you know take up a decent amount of your pocket but that's fine with me because i usually don't have anything in the pocket of the knife i'm carrying other than just the knife so i'm fine with that um this one is definitely going to go to the K320 for a score of 4.5 on carry. And with the Shaman, I, I got to deduct a full point. Um, it's just so different, 3.5, because it carries a lot higher. I prefer a lower carrying knife. Again, I, I have to factor some of my personal preferences in here. So I'm going to go 3.5 in carry for the Shaman and 4.5 in carry for the K320. Now, moving into quality, this is a really close one because, to be totally honest, I don't have any quality issues with either one of these shamans. And that includes this shaman right here that I got and had to take apart and put back together. No real quality defects. Uh, that shaman may have had a little too much Loctite in it, but it didn't affect the quality and performance of the knife. So um, I'm going to go fives across the board there because these are both two great, excellently executed knives. Um, I, obviously I can't handle every single sample that comes off the line, but the ones I've handled have been spot on and that's what I have to go off of. So we're going to go five and five for quality. Now action. The Shaman may have a little advantage here in action because when I deploy this blade, no wrist, no wrist whatsoever. You have that nice compression lock, which makes it, it adds a really nice fidget factor in my opinion, but you just simply stick your, your middle finger in there and... Boom, flick it right out, and it works just as well with the thumb. And bonus, you can front flip it. You do need a little wrist to front flip it, though. My other Shaman is actually a little easier to front flip, but you can front flip this blade with a little wrist, but you don't need any wrist. Risk, ri risk. No, it's wrist. You don't need any wrist, wrist to deploy the blade. I, I don't know why I'm struggling with that word so bad. But anyway, that's the Shaman. Now, when you get into the K320, you need just a little wrist sometimes. Now, obviously, it depends on how what angle you're holding the knife at. But this cutout, while I do like it, and this cutout is surprisingly more enjoyable than I ever thought it'd be because it does work, you need, you need a little wrist. You need a little wrist to deploy this blade, but it's still very smooth. The action is incredibly smooth, and with just a little wrist... It's very, very easy to deploy this blade. And when you use the axis lock, or the able lock, excuse me, the able lock, it's even better. Uh, extremely fidgety knife with the able lock. So it is good, but since you need a little wrist to deploy the blade with the cutout, I'm going to take a little off that because that is kind of important to me. Sometimes I like to just boom, flip the blade out, and I can't always do that depending on how I'm holding the knife. 
of the K320. So I'm going to go full five on the action for the Shaman because it's a very versatile action, very fun, fidgety action, and it doesn't take any risk to deploy that blade. I said it on the first try. But now the K320, it does have its own fidget factor with this Able Lock, and it is the best access lock, access style lock in the industry, in my opinion. I'm gonna go 4.5 because it's still great. I still love fidgeting with this knife, but yeah, 4.5, five. Now going into aesthetics, again, very similar knives, very unique knives and different knives because I think this does a great job of representing the Hogue and Sig brand and the, the appearance you would expect with something like that. It's very well thought out. Very nice, tactical, but not too overly tactical lines. I think that's important too. Sometimes when I see something that's just, you know, just you just know the difference between something that's like full on blown tactical. This also has a nice level of sleekness and kind of a modern design to it. It doesn't fully scream tactical to me. Um, so I really, really, really love the aesthetics. And most importantly, the biggest difference is right here the gap here where the blade meets the handle when it's closed. Now, again, we have to nitpick because I think both of these knives look great. I really love the lines and contour on the Shaman, but I also really like it on the K320. But you have that extra little clean point where the when the blade's closed, it meets the handle nice and flush. And you have that gap there, that little break in the connection between the blade and handle on the Shaman. And that is an aesthetic feature. It just is. It, I, I'm sorry, but I'm going to throw that in there. And for that, I'm going to deduct a half point. I'm still going to go 4.5 for the aesthetics of the Shaman because I think it is still a great looking knife. And the Shaman is still one of my favorite knives. But this is just slightly better and a little more attractive to me. I'm going to go full five because I really love the looks of this knife. There's also a model available with a stone wash non-coated blade through Knife Center that I really have my eyes on and I will be picking one up when they become available. But after all that, the scoring brings us to a score of 34. 34, that's the highest scoring knife ever on Battle of the Blades to 30.5 with the winner being the K320 Nitron from Hogue. And that was surprising to me. I, I, I kind of thought that it would win, but this is in respect to the Shaman because this is a highly coveted knife. It's a bit of a blowout in all honesty. I thought it would be closer than that, but it wins by a full three and a half points and for good reason, guys, I do personally like this knife more than the Shaman. And I, I can't believe I'm saying that. When this knife first came to my doorstep, I never in a million years, never in a million years thought I would like it more than the Shaman. And it's become one of my favorite knives. It, it, it's definitely in my top 10. I, I, I really love this knife. I can't believe I love a knife with polymer handles as much as I do this one. Um, fidget factor's great, design's great, blade's fantastic, excellent edge. Even though it is a little thick behind the edge, it still is a good slicer. It's the complete package, especially made in the USA for $127.46. This is one of the best knives available. It's a little hard to get right now, but keep your eyes out. I absolutely love this knife. And I do love the Shaman, but in this one, in this Battle of the Blades, the Sig Hogue K320 Nitron, the Hogue Sig K320 Nitron, wins the day, and it will be back to take on a competitor, I'm sure, at some point. But let me know what you guys think. Which knife would you take? What do you like more? I really hope you enjoyed this one. I hope you have a great rest of your day. And until the next one, I'm out.